You are all welcome to Mission of Hope Ministry, a place where hope is being given, where our motto is never, never give up because there is hope for you. No matter what you are going through, no matter what life is throwing at you, no matter your problem, your difficulty in life, never, never give up. Because there is hope for you. For the Bible said to them that is joined with living, there is hope. As long as you are still alive, it is not over with you. There is hope for you. Let me look at your neighbor and say, there is hope for me. The fact that I'm still alive, come on, say it to the person, the fact that I'm still alive, there is hope for me. This is what we do in this place. We preach hope. We act hope. We talk hope. We breathe hope. There is nothing like giving up in our DNA. There is nothing like giving up in our dictionary. We don't believe in the word giving up. Because we believe that wokun apim, apim beba, say never say die. It is what we believe. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. If I fall, I will rise again. That's what we stand for here. We don't surrender to the devil. No matter how many times we fall, we will rise again. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to rise again. No matter what has fallen in my life, I'm going to rise again. Yes, this is what we are. And those of you that receive our daily hope of the day knows that this is what this ministry is all about. So if you have not been receiving our hope of the day, immediately after the church, leave your number. We'll be sending it to you every morning. Hope of the day our, is on WhatsApp. So if you have a WhatsApp line and you want to be receiving it every morning, just leave your name and your number with the usher. And you will know that life is about staying on. No matter what, life goes on. No matter what. You are not the first person that will be facing trial. And you will not be the last person. But it is part of your trial. Check every great man. They have faced difficult trial. But what set them apart is that they never give up. Every great man, they are the small man of yesterday that never give up trying. They try it one time, they fail, they try again. They try it another time, they fail, they try again. They try it third time again. They, they keep trying until they get there. So if you cannot fly, run. If you cannot run, keep walking. If you cannot walk, keep limping. If you cannot limp, keep crawling. By all means, you will get there if you don't give up. Say, I'm going to get there. And one last thing I will tell you before we go into the message of today is that knowing that you are not in a race with anybody. Some may get there in the morning. Amen, somebody. Some may get there in the afternoon. And some may get there in the evening. The most important thing is that we will all get there if you don't stop. Don't envy anybody. Don't be jealous of anybody. When your time comes, things will happen on their own accord. Don't turn your back on God. That is the only guarantee that you get there. Every other thing may fail you, but don't fail yourself. And don't fail your God. If you have these two things, there is an assurance for you that you will get there. Don't lose those things in your life. Number one, yourself. Because once you lose yourself, somebody will take you. And when they take you, they may take you to where they are going, not where you are going. So don't lose yourself. Believe yourself. And number two, believe the God Almighty who have called you. With these two things, you will surely get there. Tell your neighbor, I will surely get there. Say, with God on my side, I will surely get there.
In this commission, we have a tradition of seeking the face of the Lord for every month on what you want to tell us. And this month is our month of trusting God. It's a month of May. My month of trusting God. My month of trusting God. They that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. They that know their God. Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that whom I'm serving, he liveth. David said, he never failed or disappointed. He never fails or disappointed. And Job, in his all his trials, said, I will wait unto the law till my change comes. I will continue ever and ever hoping and trusting in God till my war change comes. And today I want to talk about trusting fully in God. Trusting what? Fully in God. In the world they say putting your egg in one basket is very risky. But it is the basket of God that you can put all your egg in and go to bed. And know that nothing will happen to your egg. I read a story about one, some young people. They said, while they were about to travel, their mother called them and said, let us pray. So that God will go with you. And the group of the young man busted into laughter. He said, the car is too full. There's no place for God in it unless he wants to sit in the boot. And they laughed and went. While on their way, they had an accident and all of them died. Surprisingly, when they opened the boot, a crate of egg was in the boot and not one broken. The car some assorted. So many things happened. And all the four of them were mangled together. But a crate of egg was sitting in that boot. They said, they said there's no space in their life, in their front, unless God wants to stay in the boot. And God went and stood in the boot. And he protected all the eggs. And not one was broken. That's to tell you, when God is on your side, who can be against you? That is why we need to put all our trust in the Lord. Trust Him fully. Trust Him what? Fully, not halfway. Not come see, come sir. Not whether He would do it or He will not do it. I know that my Redeemer lives it and He will do it for me. How many people have such radical faith in Islam? That is it. One of the things that upset God so much is for you to doubt him. That is one of the things that make God angry so much. When you begin to doubt the capability of God, God will not move. You only commit God to action when you see, when he sees your faith on him. Know that you come to church on Sunday, and the weekday, you send message to your village to them to go to and see one Baba for you. Give Caesar what is Caesar. And give God what is God. God cannot move. He's a jealous God. He need no man to help him. He's too big for help. He's too mighty for anybody's help. If heaven is falling, can you stretch your hand so that it will not fall? No, 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 somebody. Look at how big the sky is. 
If it's falling and you want to help it from falling, can you help? So God cannot be helped. God cannot be what? Helped. So when you say you are giving to God what is God and Caesar to what is Caesar, you are automatically cutting God off. How many people have fly plane before? Yeah. You have fly plane before. You should try and fly. It's another experience. When you are about, let's say, 30 feet above the sea level, and you look down, even from 20 feet, 20,000 feet, 25,000 feet, at 30 or 35,000, you don't see any woman being on this earth. But even at 19,000, 18,000 above the sea level, when you look at human beings walking, they are like cockroach. You just see some, some tiny, tiny thing moving. Houses, skyscraper will become like this, as small. Will become so small. Hallelujah. We become what? So small. How much more? Millions of thousands of kilometers where God stay. It takes grace for him to even see you. So if you want to trust God, trust God. If you don't want to trust him, go and trust your fetish. Go and trust your herba, herbalist. Not herbalists that make herbs. Those ones are good. God creates herbs for us so that we can drink and be cured. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about idol worshiper. You see what is happening in our town? I used to say one day, God, show yourself strong in this town. Let people know who you are. That you are the almighty God. I used to watch TV and I used to watch a woman called Nana Grada. How many people know her? And when I'm watching it, my spirit is boiling. Say, I am the one who has the original dwarf. I gave it to some pastor to be operating with. I'm the one who has the mother. It's the children I gave to the pastor to be operating with. Say, some people come to me. I gave them baby dwarf. But the mother of the dwarf, I am the one controlling it. And I said, God, when will you show your power for people to see that you are too big to be playing with? Last three weeks, some trouble happened. <laughs> the owner of the mother of the dwarf, what happened to her? She now said, I surrender all. I'm now an evangelist. Evangelist Nana Grada. You say, Jesus is the only way. There's no other way. All the dwarfs are liars. Because the dwarf cannot stop her from going to prison. When police and touch you and you are calling on dwarf, are they coming with AK-47 or they are coming with machine gun? <laughs> you saw what happened? I will turn my TV and I begin to hear adverts. Only Jesus can save. Only Jesus can save. And I look at her. I say, ah, this indeed look like Nana Grada. He said, yes. Only Jesus can save. And they have a program last week. Evangelist Nana Grada. Straight from <laughs> Sika Gari. <laughs> from Sika, Sika Gari to Evangelist. Prophetess Nana Grada. Bon Sam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Clap for Jesus. It's too big to need your help. It's too big for you to say, I'm helping God. If you want to trust him, trust him. And you will enjoy his power. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you want to see his power, if you want to see his glory, if you want to see the miracle of God upon your life, trust him. Trust him. They that trust in the Lord shall be warm, shall be strong. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be tired. Somebody say amen. amen. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 8. 
Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 8. David, who is a great king, who has seen everything, he said to people, he said, the best way to live your life, the best way to have a glorious destiny is to trust in the Lord God Almighty. He said, that is the best way you can survive on this earth. Look at what he said. Adjust the screen. He said, trust and rely confidently on the Lord with all your hearts. I think I better use my Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs. Proverbs what? Three. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. He said, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your way, know him, recognize him, and acknowledge him. And it will direct and make straight and plain your path. Be not the wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord. And turn entirely away from evil. It shall be heard to your nerves and sinew and marrow and Moistly to your bone. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, trust completely in the Lord. How many people have made a decision that God, if you will not do it, no man can do it. I'm leaving it in your hand. My marriage, my business, my career, my finances, my health. I'm trusting you. If you will not heal me, no man can heal me. If you not deliver me, no power can deliver me. If you will not bless me, nothing can bless me. If you will not give me husband, no one can give me husband. If you will not give me wife, no one can give me wife. If you will not change my story, no one can change my story. How many people have taken that decision in their life? That is the best way to live. Put every of your being and hand it over to God. So many people with evil voices. God help those who help themselves. Look at that satanic verse. Involving God. That when you are serving God, it doesn't mean that you can't go to your idol. When you are serving God, it doesn't mean that you can't do this. Who is preaching that satanic gospel? It is satanic gospel. To say that God help those who help themselves in that case. That helping in that case that you have to go and seek the help of somebody. There are so many people that have businesses. And in their business center, they have other things there apart from God. There are people here who are even here. If we should conduct waste session. You know what is called waste session. There are a lot of people that have some tigali in their waist as they are sitting down here right now. Some things are in people's pockets. Because some malam are given to them. Make sure it's always in your pocket. Even when they are coming to church, it's in their pocket. Some cars are not clean. Some cars, if you should check it, things that are there, you'll be surprised. They say they gave it to me to put it in my car so that I will not have accidents. You know what I'm talking about. Say I know. And they tell your neighbor I know. Oh, no, no, no. Even, even if you don't know, you know. Tell your neighbor, I know. Even, even if you don't know, you know. You know what I'm talking about. There are some candles in your house. There are things in your bed. There are certain things that you practice that God is angry with it. That's why he has not moved. Because you are not trusting fully in his name. You are not trusting fully in his name. He said, when you trust in me and lean completely, in verse 8, he said, this will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. You want to see the miracle? Let God not have alternative. 
There are so many decisions in my life that I've made that, Lord, if you will not do it, I would rather die than to go for help from somewhere. Many of you think that God is not big enough to help you. So you have to go and seek help somewhere else. How are you changing your life? You are shooting yourself in the head. Because if you can leave it in the hands of God alone, then you have committed God to action. Because if God will not do it, the name will not be glorified. Some of you, when the miracle happens in your life, you don't know who to thank. It's like a woman who is having three boyfriends. So when pregnancy comes, you don't know who to give to. Whether your husband, main husband, assistant husband, deputy assistant husband. You see what is happening right now? Anybody? Everybody want to travel to America. American lottery, American lottery. Then after some why American develop a system, they call it DNA test. That if you want to come and you want to come to and live in our country and you have one lottery and you say, I have three children, you must do DNA tests before you come. And through DNA tests, a lot of home has been in trouble because a man has five children all his life. By the time they do DNA, it's only two that is his original one. The other three are deputy husband, assistant husband. When husband is not around, those who are helping the husband. When the husband is around and he cannot perform his responsibility, he cannot pay at home, he cannot support, the wife will go to deputy husband. Assistant husband. Of course, you cannot do your responsibility and somebody is assisting you. Your children are in school, they are paying high school fees and you are not giving your wife money to pay. And you are wondering that, why is the children not mine? Why don't you question? You gave 10 CD to prepare soup and you are eating the soup of 100 Ghana. Why you two, you are eating the thing, then you find Lentry, Ojuai, Akuko, <laughs> Snail. You find it in the soup of, 100, of 10 CD. And you are eating and say, my wife, why are there? Oh, why are there? Oh, why are there? Why are there? <laughs> eh, she's helping you. That 10 CD soup contain all that. Amen, somebody. So God said we should trust fully in him. Hallelujah. Trust is a complete confidence in God. Complete confidence in God. I know my God will do it. I know my God will change my story. I know my God will my, my God. Many of us doesn't have God because you don't know your God. It's Dr. God of Dr. Alabi, you know. God of Archbishop Idaosa, you know. It's the God of Obinim that you know. God of Archbishop Don Kawilem is what you know. God of our Pastor Otabel is what you know. You don't know your God. You see, when the God is not personal to you, you will not understand him better. I am Reverend Alabi. If it is my God, you know. You don't know your own God. You cannot experience great things. You cannot be strong. It's not possible for you to be strong because you will always depend on me for that God. But if you know your own God, if you know the God you are serving, if you have encounter with that God, if you have experienced the dynamics of that God, if anybody tell you there is no God, you will tell them that they are foolish. Only a fool that will say there is no God. I have seen what my God can do. I know what my God can do. Hallelujah. I have prayed. I have seen an answer. I have seen the faithfulness of God in my life. I have seen what this God can do for me. How many people have testimony here? Personal testimony about God. 
that God has done some particular thing to you that you know that this cannot be man, but it's God. If you have had experience, raise up your hand. Listen, it takes those. Can anybody come and confuse you, man, that there's no God? Can anybody come and confuse you? No! Because you yourself know that you have experienced your God. They that know their God, they will be strong and do exploit. So those who know their God, give him back from that verse 5. He said, when you know God, you will trust confidently in him. Give me from verse 5 again. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Give me an amplifier. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. With all of your heart. All. Do, you see, human being is the one that you can trust half of your heart with. Because they will break it. Hallelujah. Today we are having Mr. and Mrs. Tete in the house. Should I put all my trust in my husband? All my trust. Should I put all my trust in my wife? No. No man being, no matter who they are, they will fail you. It's not that we cannot trust ourselves, but to have 100% trust in a human being, you have made that man, human being your God. And you are expecting what to see from God from that human being. You are making a mistake. That's why some of us get broken, get disappointed, get discouraged. I thought this person cannot be. You forget that that human being is a, that person is a human being. He's capable of making a mistake. So you cannot put all your trust in human being. Because you are actually making that woman being to be like God. It is God that you, you say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. Go ahead. I'm still reading an HSBC. What happened to the amplifier? He said, think about him in all your way. And it will guide you on your right paths. Hallelujah. Amen. Think about him in all your way. He said, look at it. In all your way, know, recognize, and acknowledge him. And it will direct and make straight your plain path. He said, be not the wise in your own eyes. Do not be wise. Hallelujah. Do not be wise. You can't outsmart God. But it's amazing to see that some of us want to outsmart God. Somebody that as you are sitting down there is seeing everything in your heart. As you are sitting down there, the thing you say, you know. The thing you did not say, you know. The thing you want to say tomorrow, you already know. The thing you are about to say next year, you already seen it. And you want to be wise and you want to asmart him how possible it is some of us claim that we are serving god and the lord said to me that the reason why we are not seeing his power is that we are not trusting in him fully some of us their percentage is about 50 percent some 40 percent some 60 percent some 70 percent some 80 percent even the most holy of the holy, probably 90%. But God said, no, I don't want your 90%. There was a, 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 a dictator leader in Nigeria some time ago. His name is called General Sonny Labasha. He's a military leader. Very tough military leader. Who ruled the country. Do you know what he said? He said, I don't believe in 99% loyalty. If I catch you that your loyalty towards me is 99%, you will be dead to it. If you want to be loyal to me, it has to be 100% or zero. 
It's a military dictator. When he catch you with 99%, you are gone. A woman being can demand 100% loyalty to him. A woman being can demand from you, Edda. If a woman being can demand 100% loyalty, a woman being that one day he just slept and he died. He said he ate apple and he died from the apple. <laughs> it was a rumor that a, a small lady is the one that gave him apple to eat and he died. That was a rumor, alleged. If that woman being who is nothing can demand 100% loyalty, how much more your God? God is looking for people who will say, Father, I give you everything. I believe in you that you will change my situation. I believe in you that no matter what I'm going through, I know that you know my name. You know what? I've seen many things being practiced as a Christian. And it shocks me. I've seen a couple. I'm going to use an example of marriages. So I want you to listen to me, Mr. and Mrs. A husband and a wife came to me. And the wife came to complain about the husband. That you know that the husband is doing some things. He's cheating on her. But she has committed it to God that God will fight for her and expose everything. Even though I did not see, I know God, my God who I serve, will expose the man. And I said, okay, there's no counseling, there's nothing. You believe God? Say yes. You know God will fight for you? She said yes. She know that God will defend you? He said yes. I said, don't fight your husband. Don't quarrel with anybody. Don't just live your life normal because you have put everything in the hands of God. You believe what you say? He said, I believe. When they get to me in the night, then the husband called me and said, come and see fight in the house. The wife who said, I leave everything in the house of God, he said, he merely received a call. And the woman said, so one of your girls has started calling you a shower man, this and that. Quarrel with the man a lot. And the lady took the man's phone. Any lady he saw there will call you, leave my husband alone. Oh. Any lady at all on the man's phone. Then they came back again to me. And I said, uh, do you know that you are an unbeliever? He said, Pastor, why do you call me an unbeliever? I said, you don't believe the God you claim yourself. Because if you say to me that you leave it in the hands of God, that means you are trusting God to expose the man without you fighting. You are trusting God to expose the man without you laying your finger. You have handed it over to God. Go to bed. But if you say you hand it over to God and you the same person you are fighting, then you don't trust your God. And I tell them to leave my office. If you want to use your flesh, go and fight your husband, attack him, attack everybody, sack all the women on his phone, including his boss, including people that are helping him, including his family. Call all of them and fight your battle. But if you want God to fight for you, even if a lady call, it is you that will be, hey, darling, somebody is calling you. You hand over his phone to him and you walked away. Because you know that the God is everywhere. The thing that has been hidden from you is being made open before the Lord. Some of the women, I want to advise you today, you ask yourself, why is it that God allowed men to cheat you so much like this? Has it not bother you? That you labor with a man. You do everything with a man. But God allowed that man to cheat you so much. You ask yourself, is God sleeping? Is God a wicked God? Why can't God fight for us? 
A simple answer is this. The reason why God is not fighting for you the way you should fight is because you are fighting for yourself. You can't ask me to fight for you and at the same time you are fighting. I would rather stay away. So you think you can do it on your own. Do not lean. Go back, go back to that scripture. Please give me a better scripture. I want to read Amplify because it's, it's a... Or let me just read my Bible. He said, look at it. Lean not and trust in and be confident in the Lord with all your heart. Be confident that the God you have taken the matter to, he can fight for you. You cannot labor with a man and he will take everything and run away and leave you and your children to suffer. No! God is not wicked. The problem is that you are not fully trusting God. You must have been doing something that made God walk the way. Fighting your battle by yourself. Using your own senses. Using your own wisdom. Using your own there's a saying in Ghana here, Oyan Kupon, Eya Latani. Eh? You know the meaning of it? Oyan Kupon, Eya. Someone say Ilata, don't be afraid of me, say it. Oyan Kupon, Eya Latani. Debi, 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 Debi. No! It's a righteous God, it's very straight like this. So you cannot be playing games and you want God to fight for you. He has seen it. No matter how the wicked go, one day the truth will catch up with it. So if you leave everything in God and trust God, not on your own wisdom, your own way of doing it, your own style, your own game, if you leave everything fully to God, he will fight for you. He will fight for you in the way that you will not lose. I have seen it done it in my life. Everybody was telling me to fight. I said, I will not fight. I will leave it in the hands of God. Today, my God came down on my behalf and justified me. Learn how to trust. Rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or your own understanding. Don't rely on the understanding of your parent, of your father, of your uncle, of your friend, of your loved one. Oh, this is how you deal with him. This is how you deal with her. This is how you deal with him. This is how you deal with her. Rely on God that I know you will fight for me. I know you will fight my case. Bible said to subvert a man in a cause, the Lord did not approve. God, he said abominable scale. Scales that are not balanced is an abomination to the Lord. God cannot allow anybody to cheat anybody. If that person allow him. The reason why he has not been fighting for you women so much is that you don't allow him. You are the same person that say, uh, me fire me. It's my, me fire my yami. It's my tweet, correct? Me fire my yami. I give it to God. You are the same person in the morning. You give it to God. In the evening, you go and take it to God. Me fire my me. In the evening, me fire my me. In the morning, me fire my me. In the morning, you say, God, give the thing back to me. In the evening, you go, God, I give it back to you. Then in the morning, you say, Ah, it's too late. God is not doing something. Give me back my thing. It's too slow. Hallelujah. No. Don't rely on your own understanding. Let God fight for you. Whether you are a man, whether you are a woman, whether you have a wicked boss, whether you have a cheating boss, whether you have a business partner who is cheating you, whether you have things that are going wrong, leave them in the hands of God. You trust fully in God that I know my God will fight for me. The same God you are asking that you say to you, you are the same person to who is sending names to villages. Some of you like prophet too much. In the name of prophet, you have written so many people's names and so many pictures. You are sending them to prophet, to prophet, to prophet. Prophet who did not go through any spiritual training from their tigali straight to prophet. I'm not to mention names. 
One day, some of the prophets said, people have been coming to do juju in his hand. People have been coming to do juju in his hand. So he's tired of giving it to pastor. So that the pastor will go and use the prophecy and make money. He too is going to open his own church. In this our cry here. He's been coming on TV. I'm talking about Goku Bosa. And he said, people have been doing it for them. The pastor has been making money with it. Me, myself, I'm going to open church. And he opened his church on Kaswa Road. And a lot of people are going there. I won't be surprised if some of you too have visited that place. You will not carry people pictures, people name, your husband, your wife, your boss. You carry their name and picture. You send it to them. In the name of, I am praying. So you cannot go on your knee and pray. It has to be prophets who have to pray for you. You cannot go on your knee and pray. You cannot trust God. So when you pray, your own mouth is smelling. God cannot hear. It's the mouth of the prophet that God will hear. Everything my pastor, everything my pastor, everything my pastor. You see why you can, some of you trust pastor, we pastor more than you trust God. And that is the mistake you are making. And God look at it and say, okay, you trust your pastor more than me. Let your pastor do it. Maybe your pastor is a miracle worker. Let him do the miracle for you. Let us learn to put all our trust in God fully. Don't rely on your own understanding. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord with reverent fear and obedience and turn entirely away from evil. Turn from evil. You cannot be asking God to fight for you and you are also attacking the person behind. You are the same person who said God should fight for the person. This morning, I, I turned to my Facebook and I saw one man. Somebody has put the name of the man on social media and Facebook and said, wanted. And that's all. And another person now wrote, he said, stop what you are doing. Do you know you can be arrested? If there is a confusion between two of you, do you have to put his name on what? So this day, that's the style. When you see so many things, somebody disappointed in Europe, and you now know the person is traveled for holiday in Ghana. So that he will not go and have another girlfriend in Ghana. You now put his picture there and say, he's a criminal in America. Everybody is looking for him. That's a new style to deal with anybody. If a girl disappointed a boy, that boy now will not go and write on the social media. This lady have HIV or nobody should go near her. And at the same time, you go to church and say, Father, that lady cheated me. Fight for me. That man cheated me, fight for me. Meanwhile, you are spreading his name all over social media. Lies. How will God fight? Somebody understand this message. Somebody understand what I'm talking about. If you want to trust God, trust him fully. There is a proverb in Ashanti language that said, if you see two friends that are together for 10 years, one has decided to be a fool. If you see two friends that stay together for 10 years, it's because one of them has decided to be a fool. And the one who is fool, who is perceived to be fool, is the wisest person. Because he just choose to understand. He just chooses to let go of your nonsense. He just chooses to tolerate your rubbish. You think he's a fool. No, he's the wisest person. So, in serving God, you have to be like a fool. So many of your friends will call out, don't take that nonsense from him. Let's go and fight him. Don't take nonsense from him. Don't take that nonsense from her. Show her. Do this for her. Do that for her. Show him. Show her. The moment you start fighting for yourself, God turns his back. The moment you start what? fighting for yourself, what happened to God? Say, I wish you all the best. All the best in your entire endeavor. You are the Mike Tyson. Yeah? 
You are the, what is it called? Muhammad Ali. You can fight for Rambun in the jungle. You can fight for yourself. Go ahead. But how many people want God to fight for them? Say from today. Come on, say after me. From today, I will trust you, God. With all my heart. So that you may fight for me. Amen. Amen. I will trust you with all my heart so that you may fight for me. Let me conclude with this. Let me conclude with this. Many people, especially Christians, claim they trust God with, the, with trust God fully until they are confronted with the fearful issue of life and their trust in God were badly rocked and many people let go of their faith and trust in the Lord Almighty. Many people claim, I trust in God, I trust in God, until something hits them. Trial comes. Temptation comes. Challenges come their way. And immediately, they pull back. Because of what? Fear. Somebody say fear. fear. Somebody say fear. Fear is a painful emotion or passion excited by the expectation of evil. Ah! If I don't do something, something will happen to me. If I don't act, something will happen to me. I have been waiting for God to say to me, if I don't act, something will happen. Let me move. You know the story of Daniel? Daniel was lied upon. He said, if you call on the name of the Lord, we will put him into lion den. To the lion. Everybody must call on the name of the king. So if Daniel, Daniel, people conspired against Daniel. And he said, we know we cannot get Daniel. But we can only get Daniel by his God. Oh my God. What a good testimony. They cannot get you with adultery. They cannot get you with immorality. They cannot get you with cheating. They cannot get you with lying. They cannot get you with bite-biting. They cannot get you with confusion. They cannot get you with a busybody. See, the only thing they can use to trap Daniel is God. Is God. He loves his God so much. So let's use that God to trap him. And he said, we will decree that for 21 days or so, if any other person pray in the name of other God, apart from the God, apart from the king, that person will be thrown into lion's den. Daniel will laugh. I know my God. By the time they come and are speaking tongue, fire of God will devour them. Daniel opened his rooftop and he began to pray. And the army surrounded him. And when they are coming, he said, send the the God of Elijah. As you did in the days of Elijah, I release spirit of blindness upon this one. The more he casts the blind, the more they see. <laughs> they are coming. I'm sure Daniel will say, Hey, Father, these people are coming. Oh, are you going to let them carry me to the den of lion? They are coming. Daddy, I command all my enemy to paralyze. The more you pray for paralysis, the more they run. <laughs> I know my God. By the time they want to get me, the spirit that walk in Jesus Christ that make him disappear. I know that I will disappear. The more he pray for disappearing, the more he appear. Can somebody imagine that? Daniel who had been praying. Then a fearful position rock him. He said, they brought him before the Lord. He said, Daniel, did you pray before God? He said, yes, I call on the name of God. I know. The God of Elijah, send the fire. God of Elijah. It's okay. I'm sure some of you are praying some of the problem. God of Elijah, show yourself. The more you call the fire, the more pure water comes. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing happened. Nothing. Some of you, you have expected you have God. You have already bossed God. That if God wants to add, this is how it has. That's when, when fearful thing rocks you, you give up. Then, 
They say you are guilty, so you are going to send you to the den of lion. Ha <laughs> ha, I know my God. If he did not show up in the morning, he said, there's a scripture I want to run to. He said, uh, Elijah, if he did not pass through Elijah, he will pass through Elisha. Uh, Jehu. What is the scripture? He's talking about if uh, something about Jehu did not happen, it would, the Elijah will happen. Some of you, you don't read your Bible. Sir, you are relying on the prophets to teach you everything. Hmm? The sword of Jehu. He's talking about if it's not of sword of Jehu, then it's the sword of Elijah. Uh, if it's not of Elijah, it's the sword of... Okay, I'll remember the scripture. So, Daniel was be thinking in his mind that if God did not let them paralyze and did not let me disappear, I'm sure by the time I get to the days of the lion, all the lions will be dead. For my father is the lion of the tribe of Judah. I am going there as the spirit of lion. Then they open the gate. The lion says, oh. <laughs> And I'm sure Daniel begins to doubt. Hey, this God they said we preach pray to. Are you sure he's there? <laughs> <laughs> this is hey, hey, this is a hungry lion. No? <laughs> yes, uh -huh. he said, It shall come about that Jehu shall put to death whoever escaped from the sword of Azel, and Elisha put to death whoever escaped the sword of Jehu. God is saying, Okay, if it did not happen here, it will happen here. If he escaped the sword of Elijah, it will not escape the sword of Jehu. That's what another scripture said. Give me King James and that. How can James put it? You see? The A, I've prayed. Nothing happened in the morning. I've prayed. Nothing happened in the afternoon. Hey, this is evening. And I'm sure when Daniel is now in the den, all the lions wake up and they are coming to him. Assuming you are the one, what will you be doing? <laughs> what will you do? <laughs> you already did then. Some of you fear. I was in Liberia in 1998 or something. You see? And a story was being told. I was told a story. One of the rebels who have repented. He told me the physical ruby. I've seen I've heard the story all over. But the guys who carry out the option operation told me himself was one of the general in Chastelo army. He said they raided the church. And when they raided the church with their gun and everything during the war, 98 or 99, there about, he said, we got a pastor and a wife. And we told the pastor that he should stop deceiving people and they lash the pastor very well and lash the wife. Give them lash, serious koboko. And they now say, oh yeah, the pastor should come. They put the member behind and they bring the pastor in the front. And they told the pastor, we know you are a deceiver. You have been lying. But today, we are going to give you an opportunity to leave. The only way to leave is that to renounce Jesus. Say that I don't know Jesus. I will let you go. And they told him, pastor and the wife, they should take the option. If they want to die, they should say, I'm not going to give up on Jesus. But if they want to leave, they should say, Jesus, I don't know you. Then the pastor raised his hand. Say, my man, me name, me name Jesus who? I'm sure it's three and French. Three and Liberia. My man, me name Jesus. My man, I don't know Jesus. So I have not seen Jesus before. My man, I have not seen Jesus before. Say, okay, you stay this side. What about the wife? The wife said, my man, if you want to kill me, kill me. Jesus is my savior. Then all of them cocked the gun. And they said they will kill the woman. The woman said, kill me now. 
you want to kill me, kill me now. Jesus is my God. Jesus is my man. <laughs> then they cock the gun again. Say, we will kill you. He said, kill me if you want to kill me. Jesus is my God. Then they said, the woman should stay there. Then they put the pastor outside. And they killed the pastor. Before they killed the pastor, they told the pastor that they just want to test the pastor to be sure that what he's teaching the people is true or not. That he's a liar. And the pastor told the wife before, when the wife was saying that if you want to give me, say, wisdom. My wife, use wisdom. Let's deny Jesus here. When they go, we go back to Jesus. But the wife said, no. And they pulled the man outside. And they killed the man. He said, if you believe in your Jesus, you will not doubt him. And they told the woman that he should be the one to be leading the church. And they gave the woman money, gave the woman everything. He said, look after the church. You are a right woman. Fear is what makes people deny God. Fear. Fear confuses our total trust in God. Fear paralyzes our faith by bringing doubts. Fear makes us anxious to seek more than God. Fear makes us anxious to make us feel that we need more than God. Rise on your feet. Calabos, sing the ria, ba 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 ba. Stop fighting for yourself. Stop fighting for yourself. They might have cheated you. They might have taken what belonged to you. They might have robbed you of your inheritance. He said, do not fight for yourself. For I will fight for you. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking about. Something that belongs to you. People have taken it. And you are fighting. I'm fighting in the physical. The Lord said, all you need is to trust in me. Don't go and waste the little money you have in the hands of prophets. You are going here for prayer. You are going there for prayer. You are going there for mountain. You are consulting here. You are going to everywhere to fight for yourself. Keep your money. God said, go on your knee and trust me. Trust me. Whether in marriage you have been cheated. Whether in business you have been cheated. Whether in your family they have taken what belongs to you. Say, do not fight for yourself. Trust me fully and I will fight for you. Believe in me fully and I will vindicate you. Trust in me fully and I will change your story. Amen. Somebody lift up your hand and worship him. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Somebody raise your voice to him. It's all you need. It's all you need. It's all you need. It's all you need. Jesus is all you need. Jesus is all you need. You are complete in him. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come to you today with all my heart, with all my, heart, with all my, soul, with all my soul, and with all my spirit. And with all my spirit. I, believe in you I believe in you as my Lord, as my Lord and personal Savior. Personal Savior. From, today, From today, I will believe in you. I will trust in you. I will rely on you. I will put my confidence in you. I will trust in your holy name. From today, I will leave things in your hand. I will leave my life in your hand. I will leave my job in your hand. I will leave my family in your hand. I will leave my marriage in your hand. I will leave my finances in my life. All I need is you. I don't need any other thing. You are the only one I need. From today, take the wheel from my hand. Take the wheel from my hand. Help me, Lord, for I trust in you. I will not fight for myself. 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 But I will trust in you fully. 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 Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.